Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be doing something that has already been done on YouTube before, but I've gotten a lot of requests for it, and hopefully you guys will enjoy. I'm going to be making a tech house track from start to finish. So I'm going to be going all the way from a blank slate, like we've got right now, to a finished track. And if you want to hear the finished track, you can skip to this time stamp. It's in the description. I'll give you a moment to do that. But yeah, so as usual, you get the project file and the samples and all the MIDI and presets and all that kind of stuff. We're going to create this video in the description, so make sure to check that out. And if you're a patron on Patreon, check there, because all that will be available there shortly. And yeah, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this down to, we're at like 140, that's just what my default tempo is at. Go to like 124, pretty standard like tech house kind of tempo. And the first thing I'm going to do here is get a kick. So I have some drums prepared. And we're going to just get this kick first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in quarter notes on this. And we're going to just make this little four bar pattern. I usually start at like four or eight bars. Usually I start at four when I'm just doing the kick. And then I end up at eight once I start adding more things. But yeah, that's just a good way to start. Like we're just starting with a loop. Just sort of setting up the setting up the, the work, so to speak. Like the way I like to think of this is like when you're painting, you know, you don't just like start painting the picture with a bunch of random colors. You have to put together your palette of all the colors you want first. So that's what we're doing right now. We're going to put together our palette in a little loop, and then I'm going to take it and turn it into a full arrangement. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this kick is I'm actually going to tune it. So I'm going to get this tuner here. We're just going to check this out. So you can see what's happening here is it's hitting at F. It says F sharp. What that is is that's just because basically the way that a kick sample works is it starts, you can see the waveform, like these waves are kind of really close together at the start. And then they get progressively farther apart as the sample goes on until it eventually just fades out. That's basically what's called a pitch envelope. So it's starting at a higher pitch and then it's going down to a lower pitch. And so that's what that F sharp is. is it's just picking up that it's starting at F sharp and then going down to F. But we want to focus on the F, which is where it ends up on and what it's playing for most of the time of the sample. So look at this. You can see when it's hitting on F, it's about 25 cents out of tune. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take this detune here under controls, turn that up 25 cents, and now maybe a little bit more. Now when it actually shows us the F, you can see it's perfectly in tune. Now we're just set. We're good. We don't have to worry about this anymore. It's in tune. It's not going to be a problem. So from there, I'm going to add maybe a little bit of drum bus to this kick. I like to give it a little bit of processing at this stage um, just to kind of get it started. So let's turn up the damp a little bit just so it's all the way up. We're going to turn this down because I know it's already going to get louder. Then we're going to turn the crunch up a little bit. And cool, so that sounds pretty good. So you can hear already. This helps to really bring the kick out and give it a bit of punch. The thing is, is like I feel like it can be too easy to keep your kicks really dry. But what happens is, like, if you don't add any kind of processing to it, it's kind of just like raw audio. Like, you may as well just be playing all the samples separately. There's no reason to really have them in here. But when you give it, like, a drum bus or a little bit of saturation or something like that, it kind of, like, takes it from the sample and, like, brings it into your track. So I'm going to take this, and I'm also going to add a little bit of boom onto here. We're going to turn this up. I've got it on F, so... That's good. Just adds a little bit more thump in the lawn. Here's without it. And then with it. Cool. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bass line. So let's get operator here. We're in F. So let's write something in F just to make the sound really quick. I'm going to get a saw wave. And we're going to put it through a low pass filter. There we go. And you can hear what's happening here is basically we're getting a really deep sound. But unlike just the basic sine wave like we had a second ago, you can actually kind of hear this. Like, the sine wave, you just feel. You're probably not even hearing it if you're on, like, phone speakers. You're just seeing this little green bar over here and not hearing anything. But, yeah, that's the problem with using just, like, a sine wave or something for a really subby bass line. Is you can't really hear it. You only feel it. So, what we're going to do, we're going to take the saw wave. Let me bring the filter down a little bit more. Give it a bit more resonance. Cool. And now we have, like, this deep kind of subby tone that we can feel. As well as here. So I'm going to take this and we're going to write a little bass. Let's just make a little four bar pattern.
that sounds kind of cool. I'm going to turn up the filter for a second just so we can kind of hear the notes. Maybe we could change that last note a little bit to go down to like the F sharp or something. Yeah, there we go. Kind of like a little bit darker, but I think it sounds pretty cool. It's going to have a nice groove. Cool. So from here, we can kind of make this, you know, a little bit more interesting. I'm going to take the amplitude envelope and kind of shorten it. It's a bit more plucky. We can maybe even add a little bit of filter envelope, like not too much because I don't want it to be like... It's not really quite the baseline I have in mind, but if we add a little bit of it... You can get kind of a nice thing on here. I'm also going to try changing this last note real quick. Okay, there we go. Excellent. So from here, what we can do is we can kind of beef this up a little bit more. I'm going to add a bit of saturation to it. Would you get your helps to make it a bit fatter? That sounds pretty good. And then I'm also going to EQ it a little bit. I'm going to cut out. You can hear, and you can also see on the spectrum here. There's a lot going on around like 100 hertz with this bass. And the problem with that is that that's about where the kick is hitting. So we're going to just take that and kind of cut it out. Cool, and then we'll do a little low end boost as well. Cool, and then from there what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the kick and the bass together. And so this is kind of something that I haven't said yet, but with these kind of tracks, the kick and the bass are really like the foundation. Like if you listen to this, this is really like a lot of the groove of our track just right here, just in these two elements. And so in order to really get your low end sounding right, and in order to really get like a strong foundation for your track like you want here, we need to group these together and do a bit of processing to them as a group in order to kind of like, yeah, make them sound a bit stronger together. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to get a drum bus. And I really like using drum bus for kick and bass groups. Um, let's actually name this. I'll name this the low end bus. But yeah, I like taking this because it's just a really good way to like fatten things up. Like, here's without it. I'll turn the crunch up. Here's with it. You can hear it's a bit loud. But we're already getting like a pretty nice sound here. Cool. So from there, I'm going to add a little bit of an EQ8. And we're going to cut out around like 250 hertz or so. I like this, it kind of gets rid of some of those muddy frequencies that you can have with these kind of sounds. You hear it cleans up that bass a little bit as well. And we'll do a little low end boost as well. Cool, this is sounding pretty solid now. So. From here, the last thing that I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do just a little bit of compression on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just compress the peaks. So you can see the threshold here, I can basically just drag this down a bit. And we'll turn the attack up a little bit so it doesn't mess with the transient of the kick. If you don't know, basically the transient is just like the really, like, that very first hit at the start of the sound. If I duplicate this kick and just drag this over. It's like that. Like that is the transient. And what can happen with compression is a lot of times if you compress something too much or even if you're just compressing it a little bit, it'll get in the way of that transient and your sound won't have as much punch. Like if I turn off this attack and just turn the threshold all the way down, you'll probably hear this. Like what's happening now is basically that the transient is the same volume as everything else. Um, and obviously, we don't want that because it's not making it as impactful. So we kind of do this tastefully and then turn up the attack. You can see we still get that nice kind of punchy transient. And it's not going to get in the way of everything else. 
and everything else isn't going to get in the way of it as well. Cool, so I'm trying to make this bass line a little bit fatter at this stage. And we'll cut out some of those muddy frequencies. Alright, and that's pretty good. So from here what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get some hi-hats. So we're going to close this low end bus. I'm also going to see where we're hitting volume wise. I always like to make sure, I talk about this in a lot of my From Scratch videos, but I always like to make sure we're hitting at any given time around like minus 5 or minus 6 on the master. So you can see, if we go into our session view here, we can look at this little VU meter over here. And it'll tell you like where the volume is maxing out at. But right now it's maxing out at about minus 4, so let's put it down like minus 2. There we go. That's a little bit below minus 6, but since we're going to add new stuff in here that's going to make it louder, that's okay. So. Here, let's make a new MIDI track, and I'm going to make some hi-hats. So, what I think I'm going to do here is we're going to actually start with the shaker. So, I'm going to take this, and we're going to just do 16th notes with this. And if we listen to that, it's going to sound pretty solid. That's pretty good. Now, something I'm also hearing here is this has a really straight groove. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these 16th notes in here, and I'm going to just move them back a little bit. Um, so we'll do this. What I usually do is I'll do it like maybe this much or so. But I like to do it with the first ones, and then what we can do is we can just delete all this and just copy it over a bunch. And so now we got that groove, but then we have to make the bass kind of follow that, which is pretty easy. Like I said, we just take the 16 notes and we just move them, move them back a little bit. So all these that are hitting on 16 notes here, we will just select those and then I'll move those back a little bit. And now this should have that same groove. And this part is just the same as that first part, so we can just copy it over. There we go, now it's a lot groovier. Awesome, that sounds pretty good. Cool, so then with this shaker, I think I'm also going to layer in this one. Because we can use this one to have a little bit more of like a sharp, kind of crisp attack. And then we can layer them together and get the best of both worlds. Cool. So from here, we can add in like an upbeat hi-hat. Like a hi-hat that's playing on the upbeats. Like this one. Cool, I like this. And I'm going to group all these hi-hats together at this point as well. And we can do a bit of processing on them. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a drum bus and put it on here. And this just helps to kind of glue these all together. Like, I turn this off. And then we'll turn that damp up, turn the crunch up a little bit. And then turn it on. You know, it really takes everything and kind of like ties it all together. Like, it really feels like it's... Yeah, kind of putting all this in the same world. And this really helps, too. Like, group processing is very underrated, I feel like. Like, a lot of times I get questions like, you know, how do you take your percussion and kind of, like, make it all sound together? Or how do you take samples and make them all sound like they all, you know, are in the same world? And this is really how you do it. It's like, by processing a lot of different samples in the same way, you're kind of putting the same sonic umbrella over top of everything, which is making everything a lot more, like, similar texturally. Now I'm going to turn these shakers down a little bit. Cool, we got a pretty solid start here. So from here, I think I'm going to get a clap in here. We can get this one. Just like a pretty solid, kind of like punchy, sort of sharp clap. Let's put it up at C sharp. Sometimes that can be a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of processing on that. I wanna put a saturator on it. Just to make it kind of punch through a little bit more. Awesome though, this is sounding pretty good. So I'm gonna go here and kind of work with this bass line a little bit now. Yeah, that's good. See, that way we're still getting like a little bit more kind of attack with it. Excellent. And that's the thing too, like, you know, a lot of times you kind of work as you go with this kind of stuff. And I think I'm actually going to work with the bass a little bit more as well. I'm going to take this and I'm going to split it. So we're going to have that first layer that you were hearing this whole time is going to be like the main bass, but then underneath that we're going to put this sub. And we're going to add a little bit of saturation. You can kind of feel that a little bit stronger. And then on this one, we will cut the low end. Well, you can hear now that we have the split, it's kind of like a little bit stronger sounding. Like we're getting a stronger low end now. And then if we saturate these together, there you go, it becomes warm bass. But I think now that I'm hearing like the full scope of what we have going on here, that sub makes a lot more sense. Cool. So from here, what I think I'm going to add is just a bit of percussion. Again, we're trying to get this kind of like from the most foundational elements up. So like I started with the kick and then I went into the bass and then we started adding the percussion. And we're just kind of going from the ground up here. Like, I'm not trying to worry about too many things at once. I'm just trying to get it all, get it all in here. So I have all these percussion sounds. I'm going to put these in a drum rack. And I actually also have this little hi-hat here. So I have two sort of, like, open hi-hats. We can try this one and see if it sounds better as, like, the main one. Nah, I like this one a little more. So what we're going to do... So we're gonna take this one and we're gonna put it in here and we use this as like a percussion as well I can take this fade out and kind of shorten it. Maybe we'll pitch it up a few But I think that's gonna sound cool like I said as like a little Kind of percussion sound because it's a hi-hat So we'll take this and we'll make a little four bar loop and then let's just see what we can come up with Maybe we do like a little bit of this. All right, that's good. Now we do need to move this back a little bit with the swing. And I know you may be saying in your mind, wow, why aren't you just using a groove? But the reason why I'm not using one of Ableton's grooves, if you don't know what those are, basically Ableton has this sort of like groove slash swing thing. You can go in here and find, yeah, under swing and groove. Basically, they have all these different grooves, and you can use them to actually do the same kind of swing that I'm sitting here and doing by hand. Um, but the reason why I'm doing it by hand is because, like with a lot of tech house, I like to go for a more organic kind of feel. And when you sit there and just kind of put the same groove on everything, you don't get that as much. Like it does sound very tight, but you don't get as organic of a kind of feel to your tracks versus like if you do it this way where you sit here and do all the swing by hand, it may take only a few moments longer, but you just get that much more of like a realistic feel because everything isn't going to be perfectly on the same beat. Cool. So I'm going to take this for the second half. That's cool. I'm trying to do like a pattern here that isn't going to be like too much. Like the problem you can run into with these and the problem that I was sort of running into there is that, yeah, sometimes they can be like a bit too much. Like 
you think it sounds good when you're sitting here programming this little percussion, but then when you actually go to like make or like hear the track, it's just like way too much going on. Cool, and then I'm gonna take this one and I'm just gonna pitch that up like an octave because it's like yeah, there we go. It's just a little bit too low. Like the problem you can run into with this kind of percussion, and I'll play it with the bass and you'll hear. Is it can kind of clash with the bass line. Especially when they're both playing such like syncopated patterns. So you have to make sure none of your percussion is kind of clashing with it, like sonic sonically speaking as well. So I'm just gonna take this, copy it over. You can hear now we don't have that problem. Now that I pitched that one up and it's not so much in the low end. And we're gonna add a bit of an EQ8 as well. And that was like the other thing with like programming this too is like I wanted to make sure that this didn't really get in the way of the kit of the bass. Matter of fact, let's do this. But yeah, I wanted to make sure this didn't get in the way of the bass too much because obviously, you know. Like I said, they're both playing these very syncopated. Kind of groovy things, and you don't want it to get in the way. Let's pitch this up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Cool, so I'm gonna do a little bit of stuff to this drum rack before the EQ8 that I added, which is cutting out the lawn. I'm gonna add this little echo, and with this, we're gonna try dotted eighth notes. That could sound cool. Now, let's just do regular eighth notes. You can hear that little bit of echo on there. You don't wanna do a whole lot. But a little bit like that can really help to add kind of more like flow to the overall beat and the overall percussion here. So from here, I got the saturator on here. Kind of like what I was saying, like when you put like the drum bus on the group of percussion, for example, like when you put it on every single sound like this, especially such a sharp saturation like this, you hear it really helps to make it all sound more together. Cool, so from here we can maybe do a little bit more processing on the group of percussion, and I'll name this too. Let's name this Percussion Bus. Cool, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit of compression. And this is very similar to what I did on the bass, or on the low end bus, is like, you don't wanna go too crazy, it can definitely get in the way of everything, but if you do it just the right amount, you can hear it also can really help to make everything sound really tight. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of attack on this as well, just like I did with the low end group. And here, when I turn that on versus when I turn it off, it's subtle, but it adds a little bit more fatness to the overall percussion. And this is really the key. Like, you want to make it so that it's not really, not that it's not audible, it's just not too much. And I think the threshold of what, no pun intended here, but like the threshold of what can be too much with compression is just hard to define when you don't really know what you're doing. So, like I said, just like this, where. It's like not even so, so audible. It's just when you turn it off and turn it on, it's very obviously making a pretty big difference in the fatness of the overall sound. I'm also gonna take this EQ8 and just kind of clean this up a little bit, maybe cut like that, just to make sure there's nothing hitting in the like 150 hertz and lower range, so it doesn't get in the, ra in the way of the kick and the bass. And we'll also just do a little high-end boost just to make it a bit sharper. You can hear this overall thing just sounds a little bit cleaner when I add this EQ8. Cool, so we've got a pretty good groove going on here. 
So I think from here, we need some kind of like extra layers. And I'm hearing a few in my head that I want to try. So the first thing that I want to do here is I'm going to actually get a little bit of some vocal snippets from myself. And we're going to take them and chop them up and kind of add them into this track. So I'm going to record some things really quick, just some really simple little sounds. Mm. Mm. Huh. Hey. Just like that. That's all you need. Maybe we'll re record that first one. Hmm. <laughs> there we go. And then what I'm going to do is, as odd as this may sound, I'm going to take these and we're going to put them in a drum rack and we're going to kind of work with them. So let's take this first one and then we'll just zoom in on the little hit there. Perfect. And then we'll take this one and. We'll take it and we'll zoom in on the second little hit here. Let's also normalize these just to get the volume up there. Yeah, there we go. We'll also normalize this one. Cool. And then what we'll do from there is we'll just drag this over. I'm holding down control while dragging them to get the to get it to copy. Um and then we'll focus on that one. And then we'll take this one and we'll focus on you guessed it, the last one. Cool. So now we've got these little vocal snippets. Mm. Huh. Hey, there's a little like echo in all of those that I gotta get rid of. But yeah, so you know, just taking like these little vocal snippets. Hey, hey, hey. there we go. And we can do some cool stuff with these. I'll show you because what we need now huh. is we have all of our main elements. Like we have the drums and the percussion. Huh. Huh. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there we go. And the bass. Now we need like some extra sort of like <laughs> kind of ear candy stuff in the background. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna take these. And we're going to just pitch them down. And this is a really good way to do like your own kind of little vocal samples like this. And no, it can be kind of tough to find really good vocal samples. But what we're going to do is we're going to take these and pitch them down. I pitch that one down minus seven. And then we're just going to copy value to siblings. <coughs> we're just going to make these all at the same pitch. We can also add a little fade in on this one to make it not click so much. But yeah, like I said, we're just making some little vocal <coughs> snippets. <coughs> And what we're going to do is we're going to take them and we're going to just put these at the end of every, let's do every two bars. Mm. 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 All right, I like these two. Mm. Yeah, let's take those two. And you can hear what happens. is it's almost kind of like a bit of punctuation. Like, basically, at the end of every two bars now, we just have this little thing come in, and it gives us, yeah, like some extra sort of ear candy. It's more than just what's going on with the kick and the bass and the percussion. And this can be tough because with this style, it really is so focused on, like, the low end and getting the kick and the bass and the percussion to groove. But the extra little elements in there are very important. And this is really easy to do, too. Like, you can make your own vocal samples this way very simply. Like if you have a mic, like in my case, I just recorded myself going hey, a bunch of times. Or, you know, if you have like a phone mic, you could just record yourself on your phone and put it in there. It's really simple. You just need to record these little, like anybody could do it, no matter how your voice may sound. Cool. Now we do need a bit of processing to make these sound a little bit more interesting. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get an EQ8. And I'm going to just listen to this and kind of see where it's hitting. All right, yeah. So we'll take that. We will definitely cut out the low end. And then we're just going to boost up here a bit. I know this is, like, a lot, and it's a lot more boosting than you would normally want to do. But in this case, like, this is kind of like some weird sound design. So we're not using this so much as, like, an EQ, like, you know, the way you wouldn't want to use an EQ like this uh, if you were trying to mix. And more, like, just think of this as like a sound design technique. And like when you're trying to like make sounds, you don't really want to worry too much about like, yeah, if you're using an EQ right, so to speak. Like you can do all that later. Right now we're just trying to get this to sound cool. So I'm going to get the saturator on here. That sounds good. And then from there, I'm going to get a little bit of delay. So let's maybe use ping pong delay. We don't have a lot of stereo stuff at this point, so if I put this on 16 notes. Yeah, there we go. We'll put it 
we're on eighth notes. So we can maybe bring it down a little bit. Well, I really like where this is going. So from here, I think I'm going to add some kind of a lead in here. I kind of have an idea for one. I want to see the MIDI of the bass line again. But what I want to do here is, yeah, I'm going to add some sort of a lead because, you know, you don't want to just, like I was saying, like, you need things that aren't just, like, bass and kick and percussion. You need some kind of extra stuff in here. And I think this is going to give me a nice way to kind of structure this as well. So I'm going to get Operator. I kind of have an idea in my head already. Maybe we'll make like a sort of FM sound. And let's put the voices on one so we can only play one note at a time. And then we will put the glide on. That's pretty good. And so what we can do here is I think I'm going to do something like this. this style of music i try not to just make it like a lead like in the most basic sense but i try to do something a little bit like off filter you know and i definitely think this sounds cool nice all right so let's take this and we'll add some swing to some of these notes here where i missed it like this one and this one switch this off. So the first time it'll do C and the second time it'll do C sharp. Nice. And then I think I'm going to work with the sound a bit. This was just kind of something basic to start with, but let's get a square wave actually. I would go for a saw, but I want to do something different than I did with the bass. And then let's take this LFO. I'm going to turn up the rate here. So let's do something like that. And then we'll turn the amount down to maybe like... Yeah, something like that. Yeah, there we go. And let's add a bit of echo to this. Nice, this sounds really cool. Like I said, I'm just trying to make something that's like, not just like a basically like. I'm sure I could do a lot of versions of that. 
<laughs> but because this music is so rhythmic and so like fun and like you can really play around with stuff, I want to do a lot with it. And I don't want to make it just like a basic kind of simple lead. Cool, so I'm going to add one more sort of like extra layer. What we're going to do here, we're going to get operator again. And we're going to just make like a drone of some sort. And I'm going to try to make this like not super obviously in there. But the thing is, is like right now it does feel a bit empty. Or it feels more like right now we're working on like, like maybe part one of the drop, you know? And then there'll be a part when something that's just playing this one note over and over will come in. So that's what I'm going to make here. And the reason why I've got to play in corner notes is because we're going to make this a little bit more rhythmic. So we're going to do something with FM here. And this is why I like using FM. It's because like when you want to make like an ambient sound. It's really easy to make cool stuff like this. And you can see I'm just kind of taking this. I'm playing around here and coming up with ideas. Maybe we'll detune that second one a little. Yeah, that's cool. Got a cool texture to it. Awesome. So let's put this through some reverb. And the one EQ8 cutting out the low end because you can hear that little click. This may be too similar texturally to that last sound that I made. Although if we put it up in octave. And that helps. And I've got this compressor on here because I'm going to sidechain it to the kick. Pretty straightforward stuff there. Just helps to kind of keep this under control. So you can hear this is adding like something in the background now. So it's not just bass. Yeah, so it's not just bass and kick and percussion, basically. Cool, so like I said at the beginning, now that I've got all this stuff here, I'm going to take it and just make sure that we are... There we go. Like I said, I want to make sure we're hitting between minus 5 and minus 6 dB on the master. That's good. That's a little bit over, but we'll we'll work with it when we get a little bit further in here. Cool. So from here, we pretty much have everything set up. Like I was saying, you know, it's like when you make a track like this, you don't want to, it's like when you're painting. When you're painting, you don't just throw together random paints. You choose your palette. You put it together, you know, kind of arrange and figure out, you know, maybe mix some colors, put some colors together, try different things, whatever it is, and then you paint with that palette. So now that we have our palette, we have all of our colors in place. We can take them and start arranging them. So that's what we're going to do here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just take all of this stuff. We're going to cut it and then paste it at bar 49. That's how I usually like to start um, just to kind of like, you know, put it all. So we have it all in one spot. Like it's not all over the place. We still have the whole loop. But now we kind of have it in, in one spot where we can take it and start working back now. So from here what we can do. Maybe we'll do like the first eight bars. We'll do the kick and the clap. And like this hi hat. All right, sounds pretty good to me. Cool, and then we'll have the shakers maybe come in here. And then we're going to have another little part here. And then in this part, we'll have the full percussion come in. And I'm also going to copy the drum rack, which has those little vocal samples that I made. And we're going to just put that throughout the whole intro. Yeah, there we go. Cool, 
cool. So the next thing I think I'm going to do is maybe in this part we'll start like teasing the bass. Like maybe we could do something like this. Maybe we could have like that little ending come back into it. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, we'll have that in the beginning there. And then in this part, it'll play the full bass line, and then the sub will come in here. That sounds pretty good. And so from there, I think I'm also going to play around with this lead. Like, I want to have this kind of coming in during this part. Maybe we'll have it just playing, like, on these parts. And then we'll have the filter kind of coming up. So it'll be something like this. There we go. And then we'll have the kick cut out here. And then we'll have, yeah, we'll have the lead just still playing kind of sparsely here. And this allows us to kind of like tease it. You know, like this is really only the intro. Like this part is really just for like DJs to mix in and to kind of get the feel for the track. So you don't want to give it all away at the start. If you do that, then you will have nothing saved up kind of drop when the drop comes or when a more intense part comes all right so let's do this then we'll have the kick cut out there yeah let's do this i want to have the percussion playing during the break here and maybe we'll have the drop or the bass And then here's where we'll have the full lead. There we go. We have a cool little transition there. So I want to add like some kind of a little effect sound here. I feel like that would help. So what I'm going to do is we're going to just get a little, like we're going to program this in and then I'm going to get some white noise here and then we'll just do something kind of like this. I'm going to get some white noise and then we will get a high pass filter here. Cut out, yeah, a bit of the low end. And then let's add a bit of echo on this. And as a matter of fact, I can put this on eighth notes and we'll do a little bit of swing there. Cool, so then now we'll have this little thing. Yeah, there we go, just something little like that, you know, it's like... Just something that can come in there and be a little bit... A little bit different for that part. And then maybe we'll have this part here where the kick will cut out for like a little... Sounds good. And then we'll have, yeah, we'll have this sort of drone come back in.
awesome. Now, I feel like there could be one more element in this part. So I think I'm going to try to come up with something. So we are in F minor. So I'm going to make a little like F minor kind of chord stab. Let's get analog for this. And we're going to change this first one to a square wave. We will turn the second oscillator off. Bring up that pulse width a bit. And we want this to be kind of like stabby. So let's actually shorten the amplitude envelope. Yeah, there we go. And then we can do a little bit with the filter envelope as well. Now we can just program this in here. And then obviously I'm going to do some effects on this. But for right now, I'm just trying to sort of get it, uh, get it in here. But all right, let's see. Yeah, that's cool. I like doubling up notes like an octave up. Like it's kind of a good technique. Like if you're trying to make your own synth stabs, like I know a lot of times it can be tempting to use like stabs from a sample pack or like sampled stabs because it can sound it can sound kind of cool. But if you want to kind of make your own and get away from it just sounding like very obviously like a synth, there's a good technique to do that. Like if you try doubling up different voices an octave up, like this sounds cool. But imagine if we even put this up and did like the fifth and octave up. It can be a cool way to kind of get out of that just basic like synth sound and make it sound a little bit more interesting and more textured. So I already moved that a little bit and got it swinging. So that sounds pretty solid. Cool, and then I think I want to try something here where this kind of like, we'll just play at that little, this little 16 note here. Just something to kind of mix it up. Yeah, like that. And then maybe we'll even have it cut out that second time when that little filtered white noise plays. You know, stuff like that. But you can see like, I'm really just working like, in the context of the track like the problem with working with eight bar loops is i feel like it's so hypothetical it's like you're really just creating this sort of like hypothetical musical scenario scenario of whatever kind of track you're trying to make but when you go and start to structure it like this you really start to see kind of like like how to really make it all work together and have everything sort of play off of each other and yeah like i said like make it more cohesive than just having it be like an 8 bar loop where everything sort of sounds good together but it's not really developed. Cool, so I'm gonna do a little bit more with this. We'll add some vibrato. I like to just turn it all the way up and see what it's doing. And then dial it back to kind of like what I want. But that's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. I will bring in that saw wave and we'll put an octave up just to kind of give it a different texture. Cool, so let's add a little bit of echo to this. Um, I'm going to actually try, let's try like kind of a slower thing. Let's try quarter notes actually. Sometimes like the slower delays, especially with something that's really sparse like this, where it's just playing like every now and then in the track, can sound really good. Now let's try eighth notes though. trying to do this with like as little side chaining as possible like you can side chain a lot of stuff in this style but you can see like i don't even have my kick and my bass side chain and you really don't need to and it definitely helps to have things like as not side chain as possible now certain things like this drone for example i kind of want that to be a little bit in the back We can see even though this little like stab is playing pretty frequently here, if you mix it right, you don't really need to do a whole lot of side chain. Also, 
Awesome. Well, this is sounding pretty solid so far. Um, we've got like our whole kind of arrangement. So this is the stage where I usually just try to go through and see like what things I can add and I guess maybe even take away. Kind of just make it a little bit more interesting. Like, for example, in this part, I think we could use some kind of building. Like, I have this snare here. From a 909, these are very popular in Tech House, like 909 snares are used a lot. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to make a sort of build up here. So I'm going to take it and we're going to just put in 16th notes and I will do some swing on those, of course. We'll take these two, just move the start time back a little. Yeah, there we go. And we're just going to duplicate that and make a long clip, which is just swung 16th notes. And then we're going to just have it kind of build up. And the way I'm going to do this is using the utility. We're going to just give it volume automations. Maybe we'll do, we'll do it like this. The trick is to have it kind of building the whole time. So then it only gets its loudest right before the drop. So then when the drop hits, it's got a lot more energy. I'm going to turn up the release on that as well. But all right, cool. You hear it's kind of like slowly building up. Awesome, and I think I'm gonna keep the drone going through to the end there as well. That sounds good. And so from here, we can kind of take the snare and work with it a bit. I'm going to try shortening it to make it kind of more punchy. Yeah, like that. And we can add a bit of saturation as well, I think. Well, to kind of bring that out, we can also add a bit of EQ8. And just cut out all that low end that's in there. Like this. Awesome. And then we can turn that utility back on. You can also hear that automating that decay can be kind of nice because what will happen is it will just kind of like build up so it will be really tight here. But then as you go through the build up it's getting like more and more intense. So there we go. We just want to make sure it doesn't get too loud. From here, I've got this operator on the second track here. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to make a bit of like a white noise sweep. I'm going to just make one long note here. And we're going to change this first oscillator to some white noise. And then we're going to put a bandpass filter on there. So we get the bandpass. We'll turn the frequency down to about there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to automate this to go from a very low point to a very high point. We don't want it to go all the way up to the top of the sweep, which I'll explain in a moment. But maybe to about like there. I'm not sure exactly. I mean, I kind of have to hear it to know exactly. But yeah, that's about good. And then we'll have it go back down again. So it's going to open up. And then right at this peak here, it's going to close right when the drop hits. And there we go. Now, this is something I will sidechain. So I'm going to get the compressor, the sidechain from that, and just copy it on here. Cool. And then we can also add a bit of a low cut because it's going to go down to some of those lower spots. And yeah, we just want to make sure it cuts before there. All right, let's hear that. Cool, and I like to add a little bit of reverb to those as well. But yeah, so the reason why I had this not go all the way up to the top of the sweep is just because when you get up to the top of the sweep of a bandpass filter, what ends up happening is this. 
It kind of just fizzles out and comes back in. And as you can imagine, this doesn't sound the best. Like, that's kind of wonky. So if we turn it down, you still get that very high point in the sweep where it's going to have, like, the sharp high end, but it's not going to be just, like, fizzling out like that and then coming back in. Nice. So at this stage, I'm just going to do some, like, final mixing. I do most of the mixing as I go. I mean, should be told, like, I really like to set it up as I'm going and not have to worry about it too much at the end. I feel like a lot of times, you know, if you sort of leave it all to the end, what can happen is then when you're working on the track, you don't really have a good idea of what it's going to sound like because, like, you're really trying to, yeah, you're just sort of waiting for the end when it's all going to be mysteriously louder and punchier and stronger. But if you do it as you're going, like how when I was setting up the kick and the bass, for example, I put such an emphasis on not just, like, getting the sounds, but also, like, how I was processing them and kind of getting them to work together, you find, like, you'll have a little bit more cohesive tracks because while you're actually working on it, you're working on what you're going to be hearing in the end as opposed to working on, yeah, just, like, sort of a promise of what you're going to hear in the end. So I'm going to do one little last thing there as well where that kick cuts out there. But let's just listen to this and see if there's anything that could be turned up or mixed better. And we're hitting it about minus four, so let's turn this all down a little bit. And to do this also, I'm just click clicking on one of these tracks. You can do this in session view or arrangement view. But yeah, I'm just clicking on one of these tracks, and then you hit control A or command A if you're on a Mac. And then when you turn the volume knob of one of them, you can see it changes all of them. So a good technique is just to take it way lower than you need it to be. And then just kind of slowly bring it up until it's at the point you need it to be. Yeah, there we go. So you can see, like, this is a lot better than if you, like, a lot of times I feel like people will just take it and turn it up to when it's too loud. And try to bring it down from there. But like I said, I think it's a little bit more effective if you kind of start lower than it needs to be and bring it up. Cool. So this is sounding pretty good. And I think at this point I am going to do some mastering. So... The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take an EQ8, and I do this in a lot of these kind of videos, but it's really a great technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this EQ8 on the master. We're going to turn down around like 250 hertz a bit. Let's turn the gain down, tighten that Q a bit. There we go. And then we're going to do a bit of a low-end boost and a bit of a high-end boost as well. And so here's what it sounds like before this and then with it. what happens is it just really takes everything and kind of like makes it a bit more like powerful it really helps to open up the mix so what we're basically doing here and a lot of mastering engineers do this as well i know i do this in like every single one of these type of videos but it really is a great technique because what it does is it just opens up your mix like you're cleaning out all these or a lot of these like boxy kind of muddy frequencies like like all that stuff And then since this is dance music, of course, we want a really sharp, crisp high end and a really powerful, just strong line. So we're just kind of taking those things and enhancing them a little bit. And again, here's without it. And then with it. So it really does make a pretty nice, a pretty nice difference for the end product. So from here, I'm going to add a little bit of saturation. Um, saturation is a really good way to glue your sounds together. I kind of talked about this a little bit with the percussion bus, I believe. I was saying, like, you know, when you put everything through, like, say, in this case, it was just our group of percussion. But in this case, it's in this case, it's going to be the full track. Um, when you put everything of whatever kind of group you're trying to do, like I said, in this case, everything um, through one type of processing what, or one particular effect, what happens is you're kind of helping to glue it all together and make it all kind of fit more sonically. Like you're making it more kind of in the same realm. And this can really help. Like a lot of times, even at the end of this track, 
Like with nothing on here. It sounds pretty good, but it could definitely be a little bit more together. And like adding this EQ8 is one good way to do that. But then also adding the saturator is going to help to just put everything under the same sonic umbrella and make it all kind of sound more together by giving it the same texture. Like when you put the same texture on everything, no matter how different it is, it's still going to help it all a little bit more to just kind of glue it together. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn up the drive a little bit. We're going to turn down the output a little as well. And then we're going to turn the bass frequency up. And so you got to watch out with this because it can kind of uh, take over the sound and get too much. If I turn this bass all the way up, that's obviously not quite what we want. So you definitely got to do it subtly. But here's without the saturator. And then with it. definitely helping and I think I'm gonna turn the bass down a little bit this is the good thing about doing the mastering in this project file or like with stems is you can kind of turn things up and down as you need to but yeah cool so you can hear like I said this is just helping to tighten it all up and you can hear this bass frequency helps a lot as well like if I turn the color off here's without it and then with it It's kind of helping to tie everything together. Cool, so I'm going to turn the output down a little bit on that. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of compression. And the compression is going to be very similar to how we did it on, like, the low-end bus and on the percussion bus and, like, that kind of stuff where we're just taking it and trying to kind of, like, glue everything together a little bit more. And it's like I was saying with the percussion bus. It's like you don't want it to be, you know, so obviously compression you don't want it to be so strong that it's like, like I said, I guess it's just like a very obvious compression effect. But you want it to just be there and, you know, be helping the mix. Like, you want it to be as transparent as possible. So that's what we're going for here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the ratio down just a little bit just to make it not as heavy because we don't need so much of it at the end of this track. So let's put it down to like about there. Um, and then I'm going to turn the attack up. And so the attack, like I was saying before, is just going to make sure that this isn't going to get in the way of any transients um, because we definitely have some pretty important ones here with, like, the kick and the percussion. Um, and, yeah, so from here what we're going to do is we can just look at this and we'll bring the threshold down. Basically, with the compressor, if you don't know, the threshold is how much. When it's not, when this green line isn't hitting this arrow, there's no compression happening. Um, but then when we start bringing this down... It's helping to glue everything together. So here's without it. And then with it. So what this is doing is it's just taking the individual volumes of everything and kind of helping to flatten them out to flatten them out a little bit. And you know, you don't want to do this a lot. Like if I turn this all the way down. Like about here is the point where I would say like it's very obvious compression. Like you know, here you can really tell what's going on, but when we have it up here, it's a little bit more subtle to where if you turn it off, you will notice. But it's just adding that extra little bit of power to everything and kind of like, again, helping to flatten it out a little bit without doing too much. And the last thing that we are going to do here is we're going to grab a limiter, and I'm going to put this on the master, and what we're going to do with this is this isn't going to be limiting the master as much as you would think. Like, basically, this can look, this looks kind of bad, I know, but, like, <laughs> what, uh, what the issue is with putting limiter on the master in a lot of cases is when you put it on, like, at the beginning of a track, and then you just let everything be clipping, and then let the master take care of it. Like, let's say I have none of this mastering stuff, and we just bring all these volumes up to, like, here. You can hear a really obvious clipping there, and if I turn this off, you can see there's clipping, and then we're just letting the limiter take care of it. So that's not really what we want, because that's using the limiter in kind of like a bad way. But if we put it at the end of the chain and just use it to boost a little a bit of volume when we're not clipping, and we're just trying to get up to 0 dB, 
then you can use it in kind of like the right way, so to speak. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to take this, and basically we're just using this for a gain boost. And then what it's going to do is it's going to use the limiter to make sure that it's not going to go over. So we can just turn this up. About like minus 2.5 seems to be. Yeah, so now it's hitting at zero. You can see we still have some dynamics here. Like the green line is still moving. It's not just completely a brick. If we do that, then you can hear and see that it's too limited, but this way we're just giving it kind of like a clean gain boost. Maybe give it like half a dB more. And yeah, and you can see the reason why we're using the limiter here is because basically you could do the same thing with like a utility or any other kind of volume boost. You could just turn this up plus 3 dB, but you'll hear and see what happens. But there are some points there, and even if we put this down to 2.5, there's some points there where it's inevitably going to go over. Like you can see there. Yeah, you can see like there were some points there where even at 2.5 dB over, it was still clipping a little bit. Even if it was just like in the left or the right ear, it still clips slightly. Like, sadly, it's very hard to turn something up to 0 dB and get it to only hit at 0 dB. So, and not go like even slightly over. So that's what the limiter is doing. We're using it for this clean gain boost. Again, same thing as if you just boosted the gain at 2.5 dB using a utility. There's no difference there. But then the limiter is going to kick in if it goes even slightly over. And fix that. And that's also what the ceiling, ceiling is doing. You can see this is at minus 0.3. And then it's not letting this go over minus 0.3. That's just the maximum point you're going to let it get to. So if you want to let it hit 0 dB. There you go. Now we can do that. But yeah, so just to kind of show you, here's what none of the mastering stuff we just did. And then I'll just sort of turn things on one by one so you can get an idea for, for what's going on here. So here's what nothing. And so you can hear when we add the mastering, definitely does quite a bit to the sound and helps to really helps to really bring the track out. So I think at this point we've pretty much got a pretty full track here. Let's hear the whole thing from start to finish.
awesome. Well, this sounded like a pretty cool little tech house track. So I believe that is going to be it for this one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So yeah, as usual, you get the project file and the samples from this video in the description. Make sure to check there. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, they will be available shortly. Make sure to check there as well. Um, yeah, you can play around with this project file, you know, sort of tear it apart, do your own thing with it, maybe make it into your own track, whatever you want to do with it. It's all available in the description. Like I said, um, as always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. I really like to know what you guys think of this video or these videos, so make sure to let me know what you think in the comments as well. Let me know what you want to see, what track you want to see me make from scratch next week. Um, and yeah, so that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.